Hi folks, uh, my name is Len and I've been asked to show some techniques used to create this Viking helmet. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is to build a hat block or a form as I call it, which is used to shape the leather into the shape of the hat, the crown of the hat. Um, this one is done by using pieces of um, red cedar laminated together. I use red cedar because it's soft and easy to work and easy to get a good finish on. Um, I shape it with a, an angle grinder with a special shaping tool on it to get the rough shape and then I round it off with various sanding devices. When it's finally finished, I, when I've got it down to where I want it, um, I use uh, decking oil to get a waterproof finish on it. That's so that when the leather's molded onto it, it's easy to release and it doesn't stick onto the leather. So that's important. Once I've done that, I then create um, templates to give me the shape of the uh, segments that I'm going to use. So let's go back to this again. There are four segments, if you like the four quarters of this. I get some um, flexible, stretchy uh, fabric and do a rough idea about where it's going to go. Remembering to follow the meridians, that's the north, south and the east, west lines uh, with the stitching. Once I get it off, uh, get it shaped exactly the way I like it, I'll take it off and from there I'll create a template. I'll make it a perspex so I can use it again. Um, I get my leather which I use um, two millimeter uh, veg tan calf and mark it out and take four of these, two of each side because they go together. You'll notice it's not symmetrical, that's because this is an oval shape not a circular shape. So having got those four pieces I take them over to my sewing machine, set the stitching to really quite large and I sew them together. Uh, that gives me the shape, roughly, that I need. I'm not too worried about the stitching because um, it's going to be cut off later anyway. So you can do that by hand stitching if you haven't got a machine, or you can use any kind of machine, it doesn't really matter. You don't see the stitching. Uh, again, same story, when you're um, putting your leather on there, make sure it follows the meridians, the north, south, east, west lines, uh, with the stitching, otherwise it'll come out all wonky. Alright, once I've got that done, here with a bone tool, bone folder to get the smoothness and uh, texture of the leather the way I want it. Set it aside to dry um, and then once it's done I get my pair of scissors and cut off the stitching. Once I've done that, that gives me four pieces of leather which I can then join. As you can see here I've started to join this one. I got a thin piece of leather and or a strip of leather and I stick the uh, glue it inside there um, to make it to hold the pieces together. Now what I've, when I've done that, um, that then gives me the, the, basically the shape of the, of the helmet that I'm going to be making. The next thing to do is to create a band. Now the band is this thing here. Um, I use, in this case, 3.5 millimeter leather. It's about a sort of a belt, belt leather thickness. Um, and it's important to get that just right because it basically sets the size of your hat. So you've got to make that to match the size of your head. Um, you can do a little bit of work on it. Uh, I've tooled this a bit just to get some, some effects to make it look a bit interesting. Um, now, once that's done, the band is fixed to the helmet or to the crown. Now, the crown part goes down about halfway down about halfway down the width of the, of the um, strap and then I stitch it on. Now you can do it by hand, I stitch it on using the sewing machine because you can get that into the thing and it'll spin around quite easily. Uh, I then get some uh, thin soft leather, in this case it's uh, uh, chrome tan calf, probably half a millimetre thick, it's quite thin but it's very soft, very supple. Cut that into leather strips and I sew that in here and that makes the inner liner and that liner then folds in and becomes the soft part that goes against your, your skull. So we've got the um, 
crown going down about halfway and then the liner being going the other halfway. I glue them first to get them in place and then I hit them with a the sewing machine so I've got two, strip, two runs of sewing or stitching around there. And that puts the whole thing together. Um, obviously then you can add other bits. Now, once that band's on, you can see on top of that I've got another strip of leather that runs north-south and another strip of leather that runs east-west. And that joins up and covers those, covers those joints here. So that covers those joints and also holds the thing together. I first of all glue it on. In this particular case, I've got a second piece of leather, which I've put around here to make it look a bit like metal. That's, that's actually leather. So it's a thicker piece of leather. The, a lower band is uh, two millimeter again. This is 3.5 on the top here. You don't have to do that. I just put that in there just to make it, give it that sort of uh, medieval look about it. Okay, so I've now got the hat assembled. I've got the, the band, the parts of the um, crown put together, or the, the helmet, and the strip on the top to hold it together. I then use um, what are called Chicago screws, which are two-part screws that screw into each other. Whoops. They'll screw into each other. One's got an internal thread, and they've got that nice brass look about them. They do two things. They hold it together, and make it nice and firm, but they also make it look a bit medieval. It's got that kind of that metal look about it. So then I've got them around the base, around the band, and around the straps at the top. So they hold it together. The next thing to do, of course, is then to create these wings. So these are created, first of all, sketched, scanned into the computer, converted into line art, printed out on tracing paper, and transferred onto the leather. Now, um, I need to make four of those, two A side and two B side. The reason is that the wings are actually double sided. So on the inside, we've also got a leather work design in there as well, the, the, the embossed pattern of the feathers is on both sides. And to do that, I've got one on this side, like so, and one sandwiched on the back of it on the other side. So that sandwich gives me the thicker piece of leather um, that has a double-sided finish on it. Uh, to work the design on there, I use, uh, wherever it is, somewhere here, a stylus. Um, but you can use um, a typical, here's a stylus, uh, and you can use a typical um, uh, a swivel knife and, and beveler and so on, depending on whatever you want to use to do it. And I've got a hair tool that creates the little hairs on the on the um, uh, on the feathers. But again, that's you can do it in many different ways to get the effects you want. Now, one other little sneaky trick I use: um, I like to have a sort of a three-dimensional look to these things. It's not just two pieces of flat leather. So the first thing I do is I skive back the edges of the leather quite severely, so it gets it quite thin. Because remember, when you put them together, they join up. So if you're using two millimeter leather, you're going to have a four millimeter thick edge, which is quite large. That's too much. I then get some felt and cut it so that it fits inside that shape and glue it in there. And for us, <clears throat> that gives me a thickness. When I, when I saw when I put them together, that gives me a thickness in the middle where the felt is. Um, I then use this wire which is a really soft malleable wire and I cut it into little pieces I run them behind um, on the back here I run them behind the center of each of the spines of the um, uh, feathers and that way there when it's all sandwiched together that sort of gives it a bit of a flexibility so I can reshape it and put the horns into the shape that I want them to stay into so that's just a trick uh, handy one to do um, the <clears throat> centre of the, of the uh, wings here, in, in this particular case, there's a dome in the middle there, so I've made another little timber form. Um, and I've got a piece of board with a hole cut in it, exact, oh, it's still a bit bigger. So what I'll do, the same old story as usual, wet the leather thoroughly, put it on there, force it down over the, there, over the hole, clamp it until it dries and then remove it and cut it off. And when I've done that, I end up with a nice little leather dome. So that leather dome then is skived off at the back to make it nice and flat. I've got a surround ring there that I put over the top of it to hide the bits and pieces. Um, it's also held on with the Chicago screws. 
I've got I've, I've um, scalloped the edges in this case by using these little half 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 round cutting tools. So it just scallops the edge there. It makes it a lot easier to get a nice clean finish. Trying to cut those scallops by hand uh, drop you crazy. So uh, once all that's done, um, obviously I've got to um, colour this. I'll talk about that in a moment. This is held in with the um, uh, Chicago screws. Three of them are longer and go right through inside the helmet. So if you look inside the helmet, you can actually see the other side of the Chicago screws that are holding the thing together. So that's that. So to get the, the finishes that I want on there, I use a number of products. Um, and again, same story. You, you use what you're comfortable with. So I use various um, leather stains uh, to get the colouring. So I'll, I'll, I've got various browns and, and, and blacks and so on there to get those effects. I love my airbrush. That helps me get it on nice and smooth and evenly. Um, I use Seal and Shine, which is a polishing compound, or, uh, and that does two things. It makes these thin leathers quite hard, and quite solid, so that's, it gets a, a solidness about it and holds its form and shape, and also gives it a nice glossy finish, which looks good, especially if you're looking for that metallic look. In the case of the, um, in the case of the wings, I've coloured them using stains, and then I put a coating of the um, seal and shine on there, and then I use one of these antique gels. You rub that on there, and as you rub it off or buff it off before it dries, it leaves um, the gel inside the grooves of your um, uh, embossing, and so it gives it that sort of antique look. So. That's a really nice effect. One of the important elements of this project is that metallic look. And I've achieved that by using a product called Rub and Buff, or Rub and Buff. So it uh, comes in a small tube. It's a wax-based metallic paint. You'll notice I'm wearing gloves because it's quite messy. Squeeze a little bit of it out. This is the pewter, what I've used for the metallic finish. And then with your finger, Apply it to the surface that you want to coat. So obviously this is the rub part. And then when you're finished, you buff it off. No, I won't do it now because it's not quite dry, but you get the idea. So rub and buff. Perfect. Once all of that's done, back to my seal and shine. Coats on the, on the outside and the inside to get it all nice and shiny and seal off and finished. So that's the basic process. Is the, the real, I guess, the keys to it uh, is building a good form in the first place. Um, getting your template right for the shape of the um, of the, the segments. Um, wetting the leather really well to get it stretching over there. And then, of course the way in which you work that, and, and that's the usual sort of embossing technique you use, where you case the leather, you don't soak it, you case the leather, and use whatever tools you like to put your design on there. So that's it. Now the other thing I'd just mention is that having a form, it's a lot of time and work to get it there, but once you've got it, it's a really good investment, because then you can use it again and again on all different projects. So for example, here's a Viking helmet that I made, oh, probably a year ago, on exactly the same form. You'll see that it's got different fixtures and elements to it. It's got a different sort of design, but it's got the same basic principles as my original helmet. So there you have it. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if you want to hit me up for questions. And um, I hope you enjoy leatherworking. <laughs>